paging Dr. Murray, Michael Jackson's infamous doctor, facing charges for the king of pop's death. But who's really responsible? Don't blow a bunch of cash on Vegas when you're trying to save for college. And while that makes sense, makes sense to everyone except the mayor of Las Vegas. He's not too happy with the president. What do you hear what he said? And Miley Cyrus's nine-year-old little sister is launching a line of lingerie for little girls. Now, doesn't that seem appropriate? All the stories you're talking about and everything you need to know right now on The Filter. Hello again on The Filter Forefront, our top four, including... Do you think it's appropriate for a nine-year-old girl to walk around in fishnet stockings and lingerie? But we'll start with this. It happened in Los Angeles. It affected the world. The death of Michael Jackson. Since that fateful day on June 25th of last year, authorities have been building a case against Dr. Conrad Murray. Jackson died of a drug overdose. Propofol was one of the drugs. A powerful sedative used during surgery. Murray gave Propofol to Jackson to help him sleep. Will the charge be manslaughter or involuntary manslaughter? Either way, he'll be charged. Our contributors joining us via Skype, political activist Paul Schrader and doctor of social ethics Charlotte Laws. And Charlotte, I'll start with you. Is this a case of something must be done or does Michael Jackson share in the responsibility for his death? Responsibility, but I think he's basically responsible. And I think that, that Conrad Murray is basically being made into a scapegoat and people want revenge on him because a famous person died. And I, I, if I were on the jury, I would actually let him off. And I think that, that probably the conversation possibly went like this, that Michael Jackson said to, to Dr. Murray that if you don't administer this anesthesia, I'm either going to do it myself or I'm going to find some flunky on the street to do it. And Conrad Murray said, gee, I want to make sure you're as safe as possible, so I'm going to do that in my patient's best interest. And I, I really well, wait am a not minute. a person. Charlotte, 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 let me stop you right there. I understand what you're saying, and it makes complete and total sense. I don't know if Michael Jackson would have said, or if Conrad Murray would have said, I'm going to do it in my patient's best interest, because he knows what the best interest of the patient is. He knows if he's administering too much, don't you think? Well, you know what? I am not a big advocate of medical paternalism. I think a patient should have the, the ability and the right to their own medical treatment to a large degree. And so, so I actually, I mean, I understand this because I actually have been a sufferer of chronic pain my entire life, and I get migraine headaches, and at one point I got them every single day for five years, and I went to many, many doctors, and only once in my life have I ever met a doctor who actually knows as much as I do. So it's very frustrating when you know all of this information, you're talking to a doctor, they're feverishly looking through the books because they right. don't have, they don't know the information you know. And Michael Jackson, I really think, wanted this treatment. He thought he knew what was best for himself. And I think that he should have the right. If he if he dies, he dies. But I think he should have the right to do what he wants to do. All right, Paul, and that's what, what you... he wanted. He had chronic pain. He had insomnia. All right, Paul, let, let, let's hear Paul. What do you think, Paul? Well, I believe Conrad Murray uh, will eventually be charged with involuntary manslaughter. I believe basically he did an off he did a lawful act with uh, criminal negligence. He uh, basically, uh, he's a doctor. He knows that this uh, medication that he injected into Michael should have been uh, uh, taken in an uh, operating setting. Uh, and basically, he should have never walked away and left Michael uh, with these drugs in him. Dr. Uh, Howard Nor Norman from um, Ohio basically said this, to give someone that has insomnia this, this drug is like taking a shotgun to an ant. He said this should never be done. So I believe the doctor and, and his knowledge, understanding what kind of drug this is, giving it to someone and walking away, I think is negligent. I think the doctor basically, it, this rests on his shoulders. It has nothing to do with Michael Jackson. It has to do with a doctor. When I go to a doctor, I believe the doctor is going to uh, do the best for me, and, and I'm trusting that that's what's going on. I'm not going to second guess him. Okay, good. Let's move on here. Let's go to our next topic. I don't know if you've ever watched an adult film. I'm talking about porn. At times, the performers wear condoms, and at times, they don't. If those movies are made in Los Angeles County, those actors will have a choice. An AIDS activist group asked the county immediately to require performers in porn films to wear condom. County officials said the state legislature would need to approve legislation requiring that. So the answer is no. Supervisor Zeb Yaroslavsky thinks it's a good idea, but no California lawmaker has been willing to sponsor such legislation. Paul, should the state get involved in protecting porn performers? 
Well, the, the state is already involved. They're, they're involved through Cal OSHA. Uh, you know, it's not a, they don't consider it a criminal offense, but they do consider it a civil offense. If someone from the porn industry wants to complain and say, uh, I wasn't supplied a condom or I wasn't given proper protection, they can basically call up Cal OSHA. Cal OSHA will come in and inspect, uh, try to bring them into compliance. If they don't come into compliance, they can cite them. But if you go to the Cal OSHA website, it sets it out. Uh, uh, they actually have uh, a mandate in place for the porn industry, and it talks about condoms and other devices that should be used to, to protect the performers. But so, the performers the aren't always wearing them. That is the point. What do you think, Charlotte? Well, that's not my understanding of uh, Cal OSHA. I understand that they don't cover independent contractors, and por porno stars are independent contractors. But I do agree that that would be a good solution to work with uh, OSHA on this particular case. But I actually don't think anything should be mandated. I don't think it's practical. You're going to have a whole bunch of government employees sitting around monitoring porno movies, which is absolutely insane. You're going to pay taxpayer money that we don't have on this. I think certain professions are simply hazardous. People know that they go, they're a police officer, it's hazardous. They go into the military, they become a lion tamer. I think that going into the sex trade is the same thing. And I also don't like this in a sense because it's very government in the bedroom, very big brother-like. Boy, I so, would say it'd be government just, in the bedroom. What? I sure would say it'd be government in the bedroom. Absolutely. <laughs> So I, I just think that it makes more sense to go the Cal OSHA way as far as trying to get people to implement some sort of regulations on a voluntary basis. There's already language with OSHA that has to do with uh, protective devices, and that could easily apply to condoms, and I think that would be the way to go. Okay. Let's move on now to our next topic.